I want you all to become full members of the foot. Alright guys, this is my first shot at a review. Um, I just got in that G.I. Joe Classified Series Snake Eyes. So I want to try to go over it real quick. Um, packaging was super impressive. It came with a slip sleeve on top. It slides off, revealing the box below. Um, the box, of course, is gorgeous. It has embossed designs on it. It's kind of hard to pick up, but in a second, I'm going to show you one of the bonus things it came with. That is a poster on the inside of it that actually shows you the picture that's on the box. So it's really, really cool picture. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it and look at the figure. So what we have is the six inch G.I. Joe Snake Eyes. Um, it is considered an <clears throat> homage to the original 82 version, um, which means he's slightly bigger and has a more modern take on him and just a crap ton of articulation that we're going to get to here in a little bit. Um, before we get into the articulation, let's go ahead and go over some of the stuff that makes him a deluxe character. So besides that fancy box and poster, he comes with this little miniature kind of dio piece that you can set up with him um, has really good three-dimensional relief on it it's really cool looking with what looks like two like japanese gods or onis fighting each other um, if you turn it around it actually comes with a ton of extra accessories and i'm going to try to run down them um I might be off on a couple of them. It's been a long time since I took martial arts and I might mispronounce some of them or be slightly wrong on what they are. But let's go over all the accessories he comes with. I'll start with the standard stuff he comes with. Um, he comes with this submachine gun. Uh, the clips are not removable. It's got really nice sculpted detail. Zero paint on any of these weapons. They're all black. But they look really nice. Um, he's got that one. He comes with his pistol. Again, he has an extended mag for it. One of the cool accessories that he also comes with is a silencer that you can put on the pistol. And you can also put it on the submachine gun. So he can have a silencer on his weapons. He also comes with a combat knife. Um, the combat knight and pistol and the silencer all go on his body. I'll show that later when I go to do articulation. He comes with his master sword katana, which it's hard to see, but he actually it actually has the kanji logo on it. If I can get it to come in, there it is. That is his symbol of his clan, the Ar Ar Arshikat Ar Ar. Ar Arshikage, Arshikage, I um, probably said that wrong, but that's the symbol for him there. You can see nice molded detail on the handle. Again, really cool. Kind of wish they'd done a little more than just flat black plastic, but cool nonetheless. He also comes with a scabbard or sheath for it that also has the Arashikage symbol on it right there. He comes with a backpack. It does not open up or do anything fancy like that it does plug into his back and as you see there is a port on the side you can add the sheath from his main katana to it so he can carry both at the same time and then they plug into his back now let's try to give a rundown on some of his weapons that he has he has this top set are two hatchets all right, this long sword with the long handle is a Nagam Nagamaki. I'm saying that horribly wrong, I bet you. Then these two sickle things are called commas. He has another katana sword here. He has two sides. And he has this double-headed spear. And a Japanese spear was a yari 
I don't know if there was a special one, if it was called something with double heads or not. But all those come off. You can use them and hold them and use them for posing if you want to. Um, so that's pretty cool. He also comes with the two pistol hands on his hands, right there, left and right handed. He comes with a sculpted hand with a shuriken in it. And he comes with this open strike hand that also has, <clears throat> sorry, Tekukagi in the bottom, which is the, the climbing claws that were used by ninjas. So you can use it for a strike or climb, or you can stab with it if you want to. Um, probably hurt to get slapped with one of those. Um, I went on eBay and I ordered this generic wolf that I'm going to paint up and make a little prettier. So I have timber to go with mine because you can't have them without timber. So we got him there. So I'm going to move this stuff back out and see if we can't get in here and show off a little bit of his articulation. So we have his head is on a ball joint, which is at the top and at the bottom so he can look up and look down and he can do the full 360s and he can tilt and because of that bottom peg you can actually get his head to move forward and back without even affecting this tilt so you can get way back and you can get way forward looking down so he's gonna have no problem looking where you need him to look for attacks and because of that ball peg again you can get the tilts out before you even kick in so he can get a really good stretch into his looks. Um, he has this bandolier on him, comes on him. I'm gonna take it off because I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, I've seen some couple other reviews that are out there and they pop the head off and then take it off, but I just take his arm up like this and just slide it right off. I don't have to go through all that extra. I think it looks better without it. Plus it re reveals another Arashikagi symbol there. And then he has one on his belt there as well. Um, he has these built-in butterfly joints that it, it they don't move massively, but you can see them and they do give you just a tiny bit extra. And it, it sounds like not much, but when you're trying to do cross body or getting any real cool poses where he's reaching all the way across himself, that little bit of extra really lets his arm get over there. So he's got those butterfly joints, got the hinge there. Full rotation. He's got a bicep rotation. Let's him go 360. Double jointed elbows. He has on a peg a wrist. And then he has a tilt on it too. And each hand is slightly different. These ones the cut is up and down. So you can tilt his hand up and down like that. Um, he has his hips. Can go up. Can go back. He can do... The full, as one of the other reviewers that I like to watch for Transformers says, he does the full Van Damme. Um, he can't get all the way forward and all the way back. As you've seen, it showed itself, I was going to show you guys. But he does also have drop-down hips, so you can just slide them down. Both sides do it. So you get a little bit more rotation out of him, a little more extension out of him in all directions. He can come all the way forward and up a little back you can only get that far if you swing it out a little bit you can get fully back it's not a straight on split but he can get that action going on this is his sheath for his combat knife that i was talking about earlier it does it is functioning you can put it in there just be aware that if you do do that let's slide these hips back up it does affect this split because you gotta watch that handle stabbing in there but these, unlike most Marvel Legends and stuff, these are loose. So you can rotate them to get them out of the way and go ahead and get that full split in without having to change anything or take it out. So you have that there. You also have his holster for his pistol. It goes right here. It's a working holster. And then this was what I thought was really cool, a little addition from that was his silencer actually has a little holding spot on the front of his holster you can slide it in right there and it hangs out right there boom good to go again same thing this isn't pegged in or anything so it can be rotated out of the way so it doesn't affect your splits or jumps or kicks or anything he has we gonna pull this out he has double jointed knees so he gets all the way up to kicking his own butt um, he has a 
thigh swivel. He has a boot cut. He has ankle tilt. He can go that far up, that far back, and then it's also on a rocker. So he gets full. You can totally break his ankle if that's what you want to. It goes to both sides. And anybody who's messed with the Legends know you can tilt it forward a little bit. You can usually get all the way around with it. See, you can just spin that foot all the way around on that peg. So you can do whatever you want to with the foot. Super, super articulated. Now, these are one of my favorite things about this part of articulation for him. He's on a ball joint down inside here. So you can get tilt back and forth just like that, just on that ball joint. But, as my boy Jeremy always says, if it ain't got ab crunch, it ain't worth his time. And your boy has ab crunch for days. So he has a built-in ab cut there. And if you take him to the side, boom. I mean, he can go all the way forward. And just in case Jeremy's feeling a little lopsided that day, he can go all the way backwards. This guy is absolutely ridiculous um our boy john who also does uh, a couple reviews in this group you've seen him he is super duper pissed because this is a hasbro body technically because it's made by hasbro and this thing has better articulation than most spider-mans so he says from this point forward he better see spider-man with this much articulation or he's gonna be super upset that having been said that's about all I can tell you about the figure besides the fact he's gorgeous. He does have a diff couple different color schemes going on. He's got, of course, the main black almost everywhere. He has some olive drab, like a gray mixture, silver highlights. There are Rasakagi symbols in red here and here with silver on the belts. Some more silver on the buckles. They do like almost a gunmetal gray on these end cuts here and on the knee pads. Um, he has more like of a bronzy color on top of his boot there. His boots are in black. And that grayish green drab color kind of covers everywhere. So this is the peg hole I was talking about earlier. Let's get back to that real quick. Backpack has a peg. Can plug in there. If you decide to leave that bandolier on that I took off, because I'm not a huge fan of it, it also has a hole in it. And all you do is you just line it up on the hole on the back, plug the backpack through it, or you can also, if you want the backpack, plug the scabbard straight into it too for his katana. And I would say my biggest negative about this is a couple of his weapons, especially the size, seem very oversized. That sounded weird in my head. Size are oversized. Um, and I'm a, not a huge fan of the hands with the built-in shirt weapons like shurikens and stuff. I hate when Batman comes with batarangs built in his hands. It's, it's just a pet peeve of mine. And the fact that these are the only hands he comes with. So he has two gun hands, the palm, palm strike hand, and the shuriken hand. No punching hands. So he's a ninja who does not punch. But on the plus side, he comes with a crap ton of swords and bladed weapons and guns to never have to worry about punching somebody but it would be nice to have some so i'm probably going to dig through an old marvel legend in a box in my garage somewhere and find some black hands and see if i can't get them done up better so that having been said i'm going to go ahead and do a couple size comparisons just side by side so you can see i'll keep snake eyes right here to the side so he's by right there a lot of people are wondering, you know, they heard he was really short with Marvel Legends. So here's a new Marvel Legends Spider-Man. Uh, that Dim Goblin wave from the video game. As you see, they're shoulder to shoulder. So they're the same height. Um, I'm going to go to a DC Essentials. That's Red Hood. Uh, of course, he's taller. He's, these guys are close to seven inches tall. So uh, he dwarfs them a little. We're gonna go to the new McFarlane line with the Hellbat. And as you can see, he's massively taller. And if anybody's wondering, this is a cape I had left over from a Mezco Batman that I was doing a custom job to. So I just lifted up his pads, 
hooked it on underneath there, plugged his pads back on. Boom, soft cape on him. Also, again, personal opinion, but by personal opinion, I mean fact. The best Batman ever created, and a pretty decent action figure version of him, is the Batman Animated Series by DC Collectibles. You see they're about the same height, so they'll work good together. And my newest passion... And one that works well with the comics as they're having crossovers all the time with them. Here is MP10 Optimus Prime. Because they're doing a lot of the G.I. Joe Transformer crossover comics. So that's about it. I hope it wasn't too horrible or boring or annoying to hear my voice as much as I think it is. Because this is my first ever review so I hope you guys like it. Um, thank you for checking it out and... If you, I want to give a shout out real quick to my home group, which is Night of the Living Geeks out of Central Texas. Uh, my, I guess my parent group, the one I started out with, Toy Bros. Give a shout out over to our boys in Abomination, Flash Mob, and Rebel Scum. And a new shout out to a newer group, uh, Toy Division, and Mike Stellato. I'm probably saying it wrong. I've been... Spending a lot of time talking to him. He's big into Transformers, and since I'm new into him, he's been giving me a lot of pointers and tricks and stuff. So I want to give a shout-out to him. All right, and to all my boys here in the Foot Clan, Jeremy and John and Will and Tom and Jason and... Oh, good Lord, there's so many of us. Matt's around there trying to give us all pointers and tell us the right way to handle things. Uh, just... Shout out if I missed you. I'm sorry. Um, Till next time, guys. Peace.